Rough grouse and woodcock live in some of North America's wildest places. Today, we take a plane, a boat, and another boat to hunt for the upland king where few ever have. There goes. No. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. When Gordon Lightfoot sang about the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, the gales that sank that ship probably looked like this. Today, 20-foot rollers on Lake Michigan have stranded all boats, including the ferry we plan to take to our island grouse camp. But Island Airways still flies. We will have a little headwind going across. It's going to take about 20 minutes. Scared sideways, our journey begins. miles from the mainland of Charlevoix, Michigan, sits Beaver Island. At roughly 55 square miles in size, it's the largest of 14 islands that make up the Beaver Island Archipelago Complex. Not an easy place to get to, uh, but you know, most great places aren't super easy to get to. Brent Pike's family accounts for a handful of the island's 500 year-round residents. My grandmother was born and raised up here. Her dad actually came across the ice looking for work back in the semi-late 1800s. Over time, they helped turn Beaver Island into a hot tourist destination. They started up a couple of uh, restaurants on the island, the, the, the local store on the island. Each fall, tourists leave and the island goes mostly silent. That was until Brent turned his family cabin into a grouse camp. I've never hunted out here before. I'm always looking for a new adventure. I thought, eh, that sounds like kind of a fun trip to do. Of course, we didn't overcome raging seas and gale force winds just to sit in camp. <laughs> Five minutes from Grandma's place, Brent takes us to a young growth of aspens. His buddy, Ron Bame, rounds out our three-man hunting crew. Ron brings with him 50 years of bird hunting experience and a dog that's impossible not to love. Yes, it's Bravo. Yeah. Say hello, everybody. Bravo is Ron's nine-year-old Bracco Italiano, imported from Hungary. He's a calm, cool, methodical hunter that's pointed birds from New Brunswick to Montana and nearly everywhere in between. If he's on point, bird was there or it's still there. Bravo gets the lead alongside Brent's four-year-old English setter named Libby. So this cut was done in 2010. It's, it's uh, 28 acres. So what is it, 28 acres? 28 acres, yeah. With less than one hour before sunset, only one thing matters. <laughs> Just get in the woods. <laughs> 20 yards from the truck. Oh, there goes a woodcock right there. Yep. Oh. Our first chip shot gets away. but we confirm Brent's hunch. There's a lot of birds here. Oh, there it goes, right there, Ron, right there. You get it? No idea. <laughs> Is that a crow? That's a woodcock. It snuck back around the backside here. Guys, that bird's gonna be right back down on the ground here. Oh, it landed right back here. Wow. Here we go, huh? It's pretty obvious the gale force winds have pushed down a wave of migrating woodcock to the island. Well, here's what we're gonna do. Let's, let's just work this edge back to that two track to the truck and then we'll come back and work the other edge. So he's 94 feet behind us? Yep. 96. But that ain't moving like he's hunting. Right. 
Yeah. Right here. Well, that arrow isn't worth a damn. <laughs> Did you see where the arrow's pointing? <laughs> he still says he's 96 feet. Ah, uh, you know, throw this thing in the garbage. <laughs> hey, Bravo. Go find a bird. Oh, Bravo will find them. So will Libby. What a cock. Hey, nice shot. Dead bird. Nice shot, Travis. Thank you. Oh, what another one? Another one. Dang it. That really caught me off guard. <laughs> All right, we're on the board. Looks like Bravo slimed it. With all this jowl, they tend to develop a lot of lather. <laughs> kind of like a horse with a saddle on it. Too bad it looks like it went <laughs> through, through the rinse cycle. You know, the odds are good this bird probably just flew onto this island in the last 24 hours. I would agree with that. With that insane wind. There's certainly a lot of birds here. Yep, and we have just barely dipped our toes into this island sand. This Lake Michigan bird hunt just might reach the top of our bird hunting bucket list. That could have been a grouse. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition. Every shot counts. Waltons. Everything but the meats. Benelli. And by Nutrisource. And they say never gives up for dead when the gales of October come early. November. November? <laughs> <laughs> Boarding a boat called Resolute, optimism echoes across Lake Michigan. Hey, Bravo! Bravo, we're going fishing. Come on, let's go! Kennel, kennel, kennel. Northwest winds have laid calm, and our island adventure begins. Our captain, Mike Weed, navigates these waters regularly, but rarely with hunters. That's where we're going to. That's where we're going to hunt today. That's Garden Island, a remote 5,000 acre piece of land that hasn't had a resident since 1940. Short of going to Alaska and hunting ptarmigan out of a float plane, I don't think there's anything more adventurous than, than doing this type of a bird hunt. There we go. This is new to you, huh? This is a hunt that anybody can do, but You've got to want it. So this is public land. Anybody can hunt it. I'm not saying it's easy to get here, but boy, I tell you what, it, it's, it's worth the adventure. We're going to head kind of this way over here. There's some swampy stuff that uh, has some good edge cover on it. When Brent called me up and said, uh, hey, we're going to hunt the archipelago islands of Beaver Island, and I had to go to, you know, like Google, and what's an archipelago island? and it's apparently everything that's not underwater that still has trees on it. This is cool in here. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Feels like you're walking on carpet. It's a little wobbly. I'm not promising anything, but I think this will be worth a walk. It's wilderness. There's nobody coming here to get you. It's literally just us and the birds. You got a point. What cock? What? <laughs> she had two of them there. Did you get one? No. The first one went over you, and then the second one got up. There are a lot of woodcock out here right now. Yeah. Well, it's pretty interesting. I mean, most of these islands have little to no megafauna on them. Quite the extensive trail system. Oh. Dang. What'd I miss? Grouse? Woodcock. <laughs> really? Did you get it? No. There's certainly some avian predators that, you know, can fly in, obviously. Uh, but there's there's no raccoons, uh, no possums, no skunks, no porcupines. Just a lot of grouse. Or so he says. Oh, there it goes right there. Uh, <laughs> what do you got, a point? Ron, go in there. Dead bird! He's got it! All right, Ronnie! Nice shot, brother. I'm proud of you. Well done. Woodcock are a nice bonus, but if we're being honest, we came here for the king. Some people call him the king of the woods. Doesn't Dogwoods. Like Grouse crack. It's by far the most difficult bird you can choose to hunt. But its whole life, something's trying to eat it. And it has a way of putting itself between you and a tree 
like nothing else. There goes one. Oh, there Gross. goes Gross. Yep. Gross, dang it. Well, there's one, there's two. Somebody once said, you know, you flush 10, you see three, and you kill one. I think we get up to this apple orchard, and I think we, uh, might be jackpot. Early settlers planted apple trees on Garden Island more than a century ago. Unlike their crippled buildings, the trees still stand. You walk through here, you see an old house, and you think, holy cow, I can't believe somebody actually lived here at some point in time. Now, there's basically just overgrown trees, apples, and birds. We learned that if you found an apple tree, you found grouse. <laughs> it was pretty much that simple. Brett, yeah. there's only one thing left to do, get the grouse. And that is always easier said than done. There, 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 there. Flush is brought to you by Pheasants Forever, Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice, North Dakota Tourism, and by Rufflin Performance Kennels. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Plan your adventure at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. We just reached the grouse mecca. We're several hours into our Garden Island grouse hunt, and we have yet to connect with the king. But let's get a grouse here. We have found their food, which means which way? There. There go. There. We finally found success. Nice shot, Ron. Nice. The king is down, Ron. That was beautiful. They never, grouse never come out in the open like that. First island grouse right there. I think that's a mama. I think that's a girl bird. <laughs> Sweetheart, your mute won't go to waste. No. Oh, that's gorgeous. That one's going to get cut up with the wild apples. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be like Wait a minute. stuffed wild apples. This place is pretty special. When I hold a grouse in my hand, it's just a memory to me. And it's ingrained in, ingrained in my hand. The interesting thing about memories, we always want more. Oh, we're one for one. Don't see it. Nope. Make that one for two. It was a long ways out. You know what? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? I don't think we've gone into no. this cover yet. Brent probably just got to get in there with the dogs. Probably. Yeah. I'll stay outside here a little bit. Brent's four-year-old setter, Libby, leads us back into thick cover, and we know better than to call her out. After all, she's been hunting grouse her entire life. There's a bird up in this tree. The shadows right under that tree were, were moving. And there's really no wind. My goodness, are they good at escaping. I like Houdini's. They go down? The way they can dodge through trees and put themselves in between yourself and a tree, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, especially when there's this much canopy still. It, it makes for some really difficult wing shooting, but that's what's fun about it too. Grouse hunters that I know and have learned from and grouse hunters that I still hunt with now and younger people, I think it's still about going out with each other and basically laughing at all the misses and laughing at all the, the it was a tree, it was a tree. <laughs> wasn't a tree. <laughs> you got to see the bird through the forest. Yeah, most grouse escape, but not all of them. Dog's looking up in the tree here. Get ready, guys. Right there. Got it? Yep. Sweet. I cannot believe I hit that bird. Why? I don't know. I had the smallest shot I've ever had at taking a grouse, and it went down. Here it is. Whoa. Yeah. Hey. Holy cow. That is a monster grouse. Did I say it was a grandpa daddy? It's a grandpa you, daddy. He ain't hanging out there with the little ones. You called it. That's an old bird. Yep, look at the rough on that yeah. thing. Yeah. My goodness. We're gonna eat well. We are. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, bud. <laughs> Thank you. Dang. That feels good. <laughs> it feels better than good. Feels like, woo! Woo! 
<laughs> One airplane ride Absolutely. through a hurricane <laughs> on a big boat and in a dinghy on an island six miles later. There Grouse in hand. You're not coming here just to you know pile up a tailgate shot. I mean, this you're coming here to have a challenge. So far, every single opening we found on the island has had a uh, grouse. Yeah, what? Where? Over there. You can see that? No. You hear that bird go? No. They're the most challenging game bird in the world to, to hunt, to get to get pointed by dogs, and then to kill. I mean, they're tough. Uh, you take one in the eye? I did. Ah. Uh, you right. Oh, right there. I'm gonna go in there. There you go. I got it! You got one? You got it, remember we just yeah, got the woodcock though. Woodcock just don't. I know, but you you hit one. I got the, I got the stones on the back. Board. We didn't, we were, Ron and I were talking, I didn't, we didn't think that that was ever gonna happen. Oh, point right here, look at this. I hate the word trophy, but these birds are trophy birds. It's pretty special to hold that bird in your hand and say, wow, they're the king. Well, we got a point right here. There it is, I can see it. it's a grouse. Come here, guys, there's a grouse on the ground. There it goes. No, no. Another bird escapes, but we still have one more day to end this island adventure on top. Pheasants Forever's mission remains to protect and restore America's wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and your membership will help us to create healthy habitat, cleaner water and abundant wildlife. Please help us make a difference today that will last forever. Life is a constant journey full of challenges and opportunities. Hunting on Lake Michigan's Beaver Island Archipelago Complex provides plenty of both. You can see there's an old airstrip right there. Yep. So we're obviously gonna hunt the edges of that. And we're gonna follow this trail across over here and there's some old uh, homesteads back in this area over here that have uh, some stuff that we're looking for. All right, let's go do it. Yesterday, we flushed grouse in Garden Island's apple orchards. Right there. Today, we're four miles west, pushing through a tangled mess of high island conifers. This is crazy leafy. Yeah. I don't think the shots are going to be any easier here. Never seen a piece of woods that look like this. Looks like we're in Fern Valley, but it's all evergreen. High Island hasn't had a resident in decades, and it shows. Probably the hardest grouse hunting I've ever done. <sighs> oh, f me. It's just unforgiving. Yeah. All right? Yeah. It's no wonder nobody could make a living on this island. Settlers obviously didn't stay here for the grouse, but there's plenty of them. Grouse! That's a beauty. On the all right, we're on the board. All right, well, we've accomplished the goal of killing birds on all three islands. As far as an adventure, it's a 10. No, it's beeping. Yeah, let's go. You see it go down, you just shot at it. If I had a guess, I would say I'd miss the bird. Just to get to Beaver Island is a challenge, and then to make that extra trip over to these other surrounding islands is, is, a, is an additional challenge for sure. A challenge for Ron Bame to reminisce about on his Hunting Dog podcast. It's just an audio diary 
of my life with bird dogs and people. So Ron, is this a car back from your day or is this yeah, a... That's actually the one I went to prom in. I love people, I love dogs, and, and I love adventure, and I wanna, I wanna be able to record that. I'm sure we'll replay these moments in our minds for a lifetime. The good. Hail Mary shot. The bad. Bird! Damn it! And the ugly. Brad, Brad, nah, oh. I had too many damn trees in my way. It's okay. At least I fired my gun. Maybe we can convince Gordon Lightfoot to add a new song to his library. This one about a grouse hunter's woes on the islands of Lake Michigan. No! Unlike the Edmund Fitzgerald, our song has a happy ending. Dead bird! <laughs> Holy cow! Feel that bad boy. That is the king! He's been around here a while, I think. Look at that rough. Oh, that's a 14 inch tail, easy. This is nice, public land. Accessible to anybody. A little tough to get here, <laughs> but hey, feel so easy. Everybody do it, right? It's tough, but it's that's what makes it fun. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Well, thanks for coming, man. This is fun. You know what that means? We are not the first to conquer this island, and I pray we're not the last. I'm not going to forget this hunt <laughs> ever. Neither will I. Thanks to new friends with an appetite for island adventure. Yay! And a grandma that let us turn her cabin into a grouse camp.